precious child, precious child. In my mind, I see you clear as a bell, precious child, precious child. In my soul.
Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be.
So we are about to begin shortly, but uh, we want to invite the grieving family, um, all the family members, and those who are uh, listed in the program to do an item. So we are inviting the grieving family to come to the front and to join us in the pastor's vestry along with the so the grieving family along with those who are those who are listed in the program to do an item, please join us in the pastor's vestry. And we will begin shortly. Thank you so much. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you
Just a pause in the program, just reminding those who are participating in the program that it is important that you meet with us like right now uh, in the pastor's vestry. So if you have anything at all on the program to do, we're asking you to join us right now in the pastor's vestry. Thank you very much. When Stephen was accused, lonely and bewildered, no one that day could stand by his side. He just looked up into heaven and he saw the face of Jesus and he rose.
Chantel and Chantaya Brooks, please, if you are here, please report to the vestry. Um, your right, my, your left, my right, at this side here, please. Chantel and Chantaya Brooks. I never heard a prayer. He couldn't answer. I never shared. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. No sad goodbye will there be spoken. For time won't matter anymore. You love I'm longing for you, and someday. Oh,
Okay, good, good morning, everyone. We invite you to stand. Thank you so much. While you're standing, uh, I'll be reading in your hearing a few passages, well-selected verses from the Bible tailored for this occasion. And we go to the platform and open officially soon. First Chronicles 29.15 says, We are strangers before thee and sojourners, as were all our fathers, and our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. Job says in Job 7, 6, My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. In chapter 9, verse 25, Job still writing, says, Now my days are swifter than a post. They flee away. And they see no good. Job speaking. David says in the psalm, Psalm 39, 5, Behold, thou hast made my days as an handbreadth, says, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity, seal Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 38, 12, My dwelling is removed and is carried away from me as a shepherd's tent. I have rolled up like a weaver my life, and ye will cut me off from the loom. From the loom. From day even to night, Will thou make an end? Then James four fourteen James says We are as ye know not what shall be of the morrow for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then it vanisheth away. These are some very careful reminders of how life is. But in John 1, 14, the Bible says, I, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And how can I not share John 10, 10? The thief cometh not but for to steal and kill and to destroy, but I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. This morning, we are in the presence of God, in the sanctuary. We are here to celebrate the life of O'Neill Thelwell Juno. From the pastor's desk, I wish to express deep, sincere condolence to the grieving family, Sister Tellwell, her immediate family, extended family, church family, community. 
I extend condolence from my own family, who they too are aware of your grief and express their sympathies. Since the passing of O'Neill, we prayed. The church collectively, its eldership, leadership, uh, and its, its members, and we would have lent our support. But today we are supporting you. We are extending hands and hearts. And we are grieving with you, even as you grieve, maybe in the deepest sense of the word today. I want to remind you, though, that in the midst of grief, we have the comfort that is in Jesus Christ. And we hold to a hope that is abiding, sure. Thing the human race have left, which is the hope in God, in Christ. It is my prayer today that the service, this service, will be orderly, timely and that it will serve as a vivid telling reminder of how brief and short life is our need of a savior and that jesus christ is coming soon permit me then to direct your attention to the program there's an opening hymn listed be not dismayed, what ear be tied. God will take care of you. And the refrain says, that's the chorus, God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. The praise team song beautifully and with life, vim and vitality earlier. And now they will guide and lead this song, and the rest of us will follow. Praise thee. Be not dismayed, God be time. God will take care of you. Be Oh, oh. 
heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Let us pray. Eternal, ever loving, and compassionate Father, we have come into your presence this morning, seeking your divine grace, seeking your divine comfort. Father, in a very special way, I pray that you will draw near to us, especially the grieving family, the terrible family. May your ministry of consolation be in their hearts so much that they will find hope and strength to press onward. We pray for the church family also that it will give us strength and courage and comfort as we go through these difficult times. We pray for the rest of us, dear Lord, that even as we come today to celebrate, may we find strength and courage and understanding. May we find the kind of peace that we need. May we look unto you, the author and the fisher of our feet. When all is said and done, may your name be praised, be honored, and be glorified. Bless us now, we pray, and strengthen us. Be with the proceedings of this program, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Uh, permit me to welcome those who are viewing via the World Wide Web. And you, in your numbers, have joined in Canada, uh, the United States of America, and possibly other parts of the world, lending your collective support to the, the Telwell's family. Uh, we acknowledge you, and we are also mindful that you are not just there watching, but you too are connected with a heart, your heart full of grief. And you are lending you support as collectively as a family, we grieve together. Welcome. And for those of us who are here, we do have restrooms to my right, down the passageway, your left, depending on where you're seated, they are open and available. We we'll also ask that you put your cell phones and vibrate so that we don't have disturbances during the service. Thank you so much, and may God bless you even as we go through today's service. Okay, thank you very much, Pastor Rabbi Brown. Again, we just want to say good morning to everyone, and on behalf of the Bottom Road Church, we welcome you into the sanctuary of the Lord. Uh, this is the house of the Lord, a house of prayer for all people. And so we are very privileged today to welcome you in God's sanctuary. And as you see the sign up there, uh, once we enter the sanctuary, uh, we ought to reverence the sanctuary even as we reverence the Lord. Uh, we ask also that as we continue the program, uh, that you, you follow the program as is. We will generally be doing just that. And for participants, we have prepared, as it were, a lower podium and lectern for you to use. So at the appropriate time, you will be here. There will be a deacon or deaconess who will assist with the mic uh, if you're having some challenges with it. And of course, we ask that you use the right bathroom when you go around the back. The first one is for those who are born females, and the second is for those who are born males. Please use the appropriate bathroom as we instruct. All right, so going to the program, we have the first lesson, and the first lesson will be read by Suzette and Samuel Thelwell, aunt and cousin of the deceased. And after that, we will be having an item from the Harrison Memorial High School, the high school that our brother O'Neill Thelwell Jr. had attended. So we'll just follow in that order right now. Uh, first lesson, Suzette Samuel Thelwell, and then the item from the Harrison Memorial High School. Is 
scripture reading is taken from Psalms, Psalms 119, verse 9 to 11. With all shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed dear to according to, the, to thy word. Check one. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me yeah, not wander testing. from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my, my heart, heart that, that I, I might not sin against, against thee. thee. Here's a portion of God's holy word. Good morning, everyone. We represent the Harrison Memorial High School academic staff. We have some of our teachers and some of our students. I notice as well that I see past students who graduated with O'Neill Jr. and Kamoya is still our student. So we're standing with the family. We grieve as well. We have lost someone close to us because Harrison Memorial High School, whenever we encounter students and parents, we become family. Mrs. Telwell is also active at this point on the PTA or Home and School Association executive body as one of the treasurers. So she is a part of us. I say this morning to the family that amidst whether it be death or sickness, don't let go of hope. There is hope in a savior who will comfort, who will embrace, who will be there. So I, I just want the family members to know this morning that don't let go of that last thread of hope. And that's what we're saying from Harrison this morning. healing of a dreaded disease her money bought physicians but only Jesus could get relief and though her last thread of hope was worn down to a strand her heart held on with faith till she could touch him with her hand cause when you're hanging by a thread still you can climb life's mountain and though the cliffs are rough and jagged you can call find the hem of his garment so don't let go of that last thread of hope if that's you hanging on to a frail and fragile faith Above the canyon of dismay, 
cliffs are rough and jagged, you can call. If you should slip and reach rough sand, you'll find the hem of his garment. So don't So don't let go So it's not that we're leaving, we're not, not leaving the family, we're, we're still in our hearts and you know we're here for you. We thank the Harrison Memorial High School, the high school of choice uh, for their item uh, this afternoon, well received. Um, we should not lose hope, doesn't matter what, uh, because we do have Jesus with us. Thank you very much. And the spokesperson there was the principal, Mrs. Keisha Allen. Uh, just to let you know that uh, just in case it has happened to me before where I have gone to funeral service and I have sat there for a very long time only to find out almost at the end that I'm at the wrong funeral service. And so one of the things I make sure that I do when I am uh, moderating is that every now and then I remind the congregation which service you are at. So if you see me doing that, it is because of experience. So we are at the Thanksgiving service for the late brother O'Neill Telwell Jr., uh, who was a member of this church, the Buttermode Seventh-day Adventist Church. All right, we will be having the second lesson, and that is Chantoya Brooks. And then we'll have an item by Alia Campbell, a friend and then we will go right into the tributes. And Sis Eldam Stevens will lead us into the tributes. So we'll have uh, the second lesson, Chantel and Chantoya, and the item, Alia Campbell. <laughs> Okay, we will skip the lesson at this time. We're going to ask the person or persons who are to do the lesson to get ready, please. All right, so we're going to go to the next item and then we'll come back to the lesson. So we're giving you time to prepare for the lessons. We're going to ask Alia Campbell at this time, a friend of the deceased, 
to come at this time and to do an item. After that, hopefully, uh, those for the lesson will be ready. Thank you. everybody. Um, my name is Kesa Malcolm. I was scheduled to do the remembrance or the tribute, but after Alia, but I'm going to go first and then Alia will sing after. OJ, why pray? Everything good? Yeah, man. They are look good. Ah, cool. I'm going to make a step up at top of yourself. Ah, do your thing. I'm going to say Those were the last words we spoke to each other, not knowing what was to come after. OJ was a very jovial person. I've never seen him too serious, unless it's when he has three dominoes in his hands and utters the words, I bet you something make your pass you now. Watch his style. The boy, the lover, damn in a game. We didn't see OJ as a friend, but family. When all of us would meet up, it's always filled with laughter and seriously funny conversations. We always cherished the memories made, the games played, I remember one day in particular, we were randomly chatting and playing A, B, C, fast or slow, and R was the letter, and OJ wrote down wristwatch as the thing, and we all started to laugh, cause wristwatch is spelled with a W. And so for a while, we nicknamed him wristwatch as a joke for the events of that day. Us as boys a while back would ride our bicycles on Sunday mornings from South Spring to downtown and then afterwards head to the beach to cool off. And on the way home, we'd go to Barnett Street, get some food, and then chatter it and just head home for a Sunday dinner. Then we'd just rinse and repeat. Memories made will always be cherished and OJ will always be remembered as humble fun loving and as wristwatch he will be missed but his memory will always endure good morning everyone my name is alia clark not alia campbell to my brother on a day like today i know you are smiling down at us because we are here celebrating you in your fullness. Jano OJ, think I speak for all of us when I say, I miss you, my brother. If anyone on the outside was looking in at OJ and I's relationship, they would see something totally different from a sister-brother relationship because we ever itch up when we got the chance. Out of everybody in the group who always say, Alia, how oh, you can video everything so? You were always up for the shenanigans. <laughs> but my brother, if me never love video and take picture, our mood have to look back on you now. 
you brought so many tears, bro. Never even think we would be here celebrating one of our lives so soon. I remember a time I was crying. And you gave me one of our hugs and say, Stop it, balling, Ali. You see your balling make you ugly. And we laughed so till. I'll always remember our little talks and you being there for me when I needed a shoulder or a listening ear to complain about you. We know who. <laughs> but in life and in death, my bro, love you like life itself. And today, I will say later. And if I could hug and squeeze you and say, make sure you make me know when you're reaching safe and you're not ahead and continue the journey, I would because it's never goodbye. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alia Campbell. This morning is, I feel very regretful because I feel like I didn't have enough last moments with OJ. I work at De La Pena and I do the night shift. I got the call from the police, not knowing it was OJ. I got the call and I went through the night. In the morning, they informed me that it was OJ that died. <laughs> when I got the call, I was like, what do you mean OJ dead? OJ not there for him. Because it's been a while since I saw him, because we work. I, didn't, I don't get to come to church as much, so I, I wouldn't even get to see him. I just wish I had more last moments, but as a group, we just have to cherish the fun times we had after church and otherwise. Rest in peace, OJ. I'm going to do a song now. Please bear with me. Oh God. You don't have to worry And don't you be afraid Joy comes in the morning Troubles they don't last always For there's a friend Jesus, who will wipe your tears away, and if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, oh, I know that I can make it, I know that I can stand, no matter what may come my way. don't have to worry and don't you be afraid joy comes in the morning troubles they don't last always remember there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away and if your heart is broken just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. With Jesus, I can take it. With Him, I know I can stand. your tears and trials they seem to get you down and all your friends and loved ones I know where to be found remember there's a friend in Jesus 
who will wipe your tears away and if your heart is broken just lift your hands and say oh i know that i can make it i know that Take it with him. I know I can stand no matter what may come my way. My life is in your chapter 38 to 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things of the present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. John 14, from verses 1 to 4. Let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. And whither I go, he know, and the way he know. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. We continue with the tributes at this time, and of course, we would have had the first one already. And at this time, we will be taking tributes from Kevin Smith and Anita Anderson, followed by co workers of Karen Thelwell. So, Anita and Kevin at this time, and then the co workers of Sister Karen. My son Kevin 
he has decided not to come forth. Um, he's not able to manage the speaking. Now, 22 years ago, Karen found herself at my house. And our conversation was based on the fact that she was going to be a mother. OJ was Karen's first child. Now, 22 years later, I am standing at 21 years down the road. After his birth, I'm standing here in support of Karen as she lay him to rest. Now, I want to appeal, first of all, to us as women, we are gathered here this afternoon from different homes and different communities. But we are here this afternoon for the same reason, because all of us in some way or the other has come in contact with OJ. Women, mothers, sisters, and girlfriends, I am begging you, talk to your sons. Talk to your sons. We are here this afternoon because a young man or more than one young man decided to go to Green Pond and ended up taking the life of OJ. How do I remember OJ? My memories of OJ is OJ to be just a quiet, shy young man. But I can't forget that when OJ surprised me by standing at this podium and he gave the message along with his sister that Sabbath, I was very much surprised, but I was very much delighted. OJ and my son both born in this church, grew up in this church, but over the last year or so has moved from more than being just friends to being brothers. OJ and Kevin in the United States of America go to work together, lived in the same house together, ate together, play together, talk together. Oh, KJ talks about this particular day when he was very sick and OJ, OJ took very much care of him and nursed him back to health. Karen, my friend, my sister, I don't know why. And I don't understand, but God knows it all. The truth is, as the song says, there is coming a day. There is coming a day when all of this will be over. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come 
No more clouds in the skies. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore. What a day, a glorious day that will be. And if you believe it, sing it with me. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look. His face, the one who saved me by his grace. And when he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land, what a day! And no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, and no more pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. Oh,
Are the co-workers of Sister Selwell here? All right, we'll, con we'll continue the program as we will now have Mr. Larry Morris, Citizen Association President, and after that, we'll have Alton and Sean Thelwell. Mr. Larry. Good morning, everyone. It's mighty nice to be on the Lord's side. Amen, somebody. I want you to understand that there's only one day that is in this church this morning. He has been taken away. Born on the 15th. Died on the 14th. And now today is the 15th. And if you do the match, that tell you that it's 44. Yesterday I've been to a funeral at a young lady who died at 41. Today, I have to talk to my members last week that I will be at a funeral service this morning. Who have problem with Saturday and Sunday, you can stay. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Larry Morris, Greenpond United Citizen Association. President, of the Green Pond United Marching Band, Vice President of the Green Pond CDC, Community Development Committee. I have known OJ for all his life. I know that he said good morning or good day or good afternoon, but if he talk, I cannot tell you. Well-mannered, well-groomed, well-trained, and according to the word, train up a child in the way he or she should grow, that when they are old, they will not depart. When I got the news that somebody got shot, I'm not surprised when somebody gets shot, trust me. But when I heard that it's Karen and O'Neill's son, it takes me to a standstill. And we always ask the question, why? But God knows why. And I happened to talk to Karen, and I said, take comfort that God is your comforter. I have never, never seen that a young man walk from up his house down to the square in Green Pond. He will walk to Cornwall or wherever to get a drive. If it was him alone, the police would have no job to do. But unfortunately, he has been taken away. But we know for sure that God gave life. Say amen. And we know, as I always tell people that, from the day you were born, remember that one day you have to go. So that casket, I am not afraid. And I will work in the parlor tomorrow morning too. But it's not when you die or how you die. But I encourage those who are alive to make your election sure. Not for Mr. Andrew or Mr. Golden, but make God the priority of your life. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So I know that it is hot, it's rough. Karen and O'Neill, I know many are here. I've been on this side for over 30 years, and it's like my son died. I say to us today, life is short. And the word of God said, teach us to number our days that I will apply my heart to wisdom. Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage Karen and O'Neill and his little sister and everybody here who are alive to take heart that God is still in control. Regardless of how these guys are behaving, take heart that God is in control. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. In this life, our trials are many and sometimes 
times our feet gets weary and it seems that I would stumble and almost fall. But the gentle hands that keeps me is the hand that keeps me steady. Give me grace that I will make it after all. Oh, after all, this life is over, and my labor here is under. <laughs> Lord, I climb upon the mountain tops to talk. just cannot make it. <laughs> hey, God. But I know he's there to help me. Karen, if the whim in earnest prayer I'll keep on calling. Honey, keep on trusting and believing. In all the words I heard him whisper just a few more days after all, oh, after all, this life is over. Oh, God, one day we're going to leave. And my labor here is ended. Lord, I'll climb above the mountain tops so tall. Hey, look in I'm not afraid for dead. Me know me I go one day and you can't kill me before my time. I don't try to tell you no. Me come out any hours and me go in any hours. You can't kill the body, but you can't kill the soul. After all, Lord, I love you. I love you. Nobody not going to put upon this program where his soul rest in peace. Me hear too much preach of and I give my life to God. Looking over in the city. One of the things Jamaica nice. Wait. That my Savior is preparing. Give me grace that I after all. I love you, but God love you best. Good morning, everyone. It is indeed good to have the family and all of you here today to celebrate the goodness of Almighty God to us in these troubled times. Uh, regardless of the situation, our God is still in control. There's a season and a time to everything under the earth. And so what all of us have the responsibility to do is to make sure that we are all ready to meet our Savior when he knocks on our, do on our doors. And so today I give God thanks. Give God thanks for the opportunity that I was able to share 
with OJ on more than one occasion. I have always loved him as if he was my own son. I've always bothered him from he was a child that he looked more like me than he does his dad. So we were always very close. In recent times, OJ had his own situations. And I said to him on one occasion, that OJ, I don't want you to be upset about the state that you find yourself in. I want you to see it as an opportunity that God might have caused others to come to know him through you. And OJ agreed with me. He called me one day when he was with his mother and father to tell them what you told me. He wanted me to express that, OJ, don't be worried, man. Just take things easy, brother. Because God brought you to this point for a purpose. He told me that, uncle, I am in charge. I'm running things where I'm at. And he said, this must be God for true. That God has brought me here for a purpose. To everything, everything under the earth. There's a time and a season. Make sure your calling is right. Make sure that you find God while he, there's still breath in your body. Uh, you too will be there on that great triumphant morning when he will call his people home. I give God thanks on behalf of my family, my brothers and sisters and those overseas. They asked me to express again condolences to our brother and his wife and his daughter and to the grieving family of this great church of God, this SDA church, that you too will continue to encourage them and be a tower of strength for them. And as they go through this difficult time, they will know that we are all brothers and sisters in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank you. Good day, church. Um, I'm here to sing, but I do believe in talking first. Ajay and I grew up very, very close. You know, we were always around each other. And as much as everybody else can testify to what he was then, I mourned the child that I knew. Um, Ajay and I, we were always butting heads because Ajay was quiet and I was loud. OJ was very, let's go do this. And I was like, no, 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 no. My first time climbing a roof was with OJ. OJ pushed me up from here. He told me, go up, go up, you'll be fine. OJ has always been a team player. I remember one day we went for ice cream. And everybody else had their money ready. And I had coins. And OJ said, come on, we go back to the yard. And OJ pulled out my, my little tin. And he, he took out every single $1. And we counted up to 100 we were missing one. There was 99. And he brought the bag to the ice cream, and I said, hmm, yeah, ice cream. And he said, I want you to love that. And he said, yeah, you want county? I said, no, man, just, just, just take it. <laughs> OJ has always been in our corner. And in remembering him, there is a poem by Wilfred Owen a war veteran who died one week before the war, young man, and it says in futility, move him into the sun, gently its touch awoke him once, at home whispering of fields unsown, always it woke him, even in France, until this morning and this snow, if anything might rouse him, no, the kind old son will know. Think how it waits the seeds, woke once the clays of a gold star, our limbs so dear achieved, our sides full nerved, still warm, too hard to stir. Was it for this the clay grew tall? Oh, what made Fatio's sunbeams toil to break earth's sleep at all? And if you were listening, I know that OJ can't get up. I know that he can't just, he won't just walk through the church building. But with the ashes, I hope that we can find the beauty in them. What's left to do? 
these prayers ain't working anymore. I'm losing my voice, calling on you. What's left to say with these broken pieces on the floor? Every word shot down in flames. Cause I've been shaking, I've been bending backwards till I'm broke. Watching all these dreams go up in smoke. Let beauty come out. Can you use these tears to put out the fires in my soul? Cause I need you here. Whoa. Our trials will be many, our trials will be great, but let us keep praying that God will give us grace to make it all the way. We'll now have another tribute by Queensley Clark, and that will be followed by an item from the praise team.
If I could count the tears that had fallen, it would seem like an ocean to me. And if my heart were a window, you could look through.
victory welcome in that heavenly home. Let us all be faithful, let us all be true, so that we can be in glory where we won't have to be crying anymore. At this time, we'll ask Queensley Clark to come and give us the third lesson, and it will, it will be taken from Revelation 21, verses 1 to 4. I'll be reading on behalf of one of his friends, um, Subira Dona. Revelation 21, verses 1 to 4. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. 
And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So earlier when I uh, did the opening sentence, I mentioned that a number of persons are viewing from overseas via the internet. And uh, I just want to highlight some of the individuals who are presently with us joining and sharing. We have Alien uh, from the Power Word International Church, a cousin. And we have members from the Philadelphia Seventh day Adventist Church in Canada, Steve, an uncle of Sister Telwell, to be exact, and is mentioned by name. We also have members from the House of Refuge Apostle in England, and in that congregation, viewing is Sophia, an aunt. And then we also have uh, an uncle of Sister Thelwell and the family, viewing from Canada. Uh, his first name is Pierre. And I mean, I, you needed to tell me. Thank you so much. And we are blessed with the presence of a former pastor, one who would have served with distinction at this church. And in the same breath and vein is one of the senior pastors uh, in the West Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, one of the finest pastors we have in terms of ministry personality and his ability to connect with his parishioners, those with whom uh, he's asked to serve, and one whom we love dearly among the pastorate. I'm talking about Pastor Alpheus Smith. He's presently serving, uh, you can give a round of applause, uh, presently serving at the Flanker Seventh-day Adventist Church, District of Churches, and uh, I know uh, he wouldn't miss this occasion for nothing, and so we have him. Allow me then to uh, allow him to bring word, a word, a comfort, a condolence, a thought to the grieving family, and by extension, the congregation. Thank you very much, Pastor Brown, Pastor Rabbi, the only rabbi in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Well, I must say that I'm eternally grateful to be here today, this afternoon, and to be given this opportunity uh, to just say a few words of condolences. Last evening, last night, one of my sons, um, who both are now residing in Canada, called me and he said, Daddy, did you know that tomorrow is going to be the funeral service for O'Neill? And I said to him, well, I, I didn't know. And he said, yes, it is. So I sent a text to um, one of my friends from here 
just to inquire, to be sure. So he said to me, Daddy, if you are not busy, I'm going to ask you to try and go. All right? Now, I, I could have been busy because I have some other things that I could have occupied myself with. But I told him that I will make the effort and I will go. And so on behalf of my two sons, Neil and Adriel, who would have known O'Neill in a very personal way, I want to bring our sincerest condolences to the family members of O'Neill Jr., to Sister Karen, to Brother O'Neill, your daughter, the other family members. Well, you know, my boys, having served here, they got close with a number of the other youngsters here at church. And uh, the fact that O'Neill was also a student at, at Harrison, where they went, you know, they had a very good bond, very good relationship. And they were very, very devastated when they got the news. Well, and, and most of the times they get the news before me because they seem to have some network. <laughs> uh, but they were very, very devastated to have heard about his untimely passing. But I just want to commend to the family uh, someone who cares someone who understands you know we can say all that we we want to but the truth is that as human beings we can never fully understand what's happening in the the hearts the minds of the family members but the great thing is that we know one who cares and one who understands and that one is jesus Someone mentioned earlier that in situations like these, we often have many questions, questions for which we can't find suitable answers. But the truth is that in the end, in the final analysis, if we remain faithful, then we will receive all the answers, you know, in the year after. I just want to you know, say a, a few things about um, these, the, the, the couple, the, these, my sister and my brother. You know, when I served here, um, Sister Telwell, you became one of the Sabbath school superintendents. And um, she was very outstanding. Um, one of the years in our nominating committee, she was my secretary, secretary for the nominating committee. And I had to commend her because she made my job very, very easy because after having gone through the process, she had the responsibility to make contact with the persons and she did just a great job. I remember our brother Telwell as a figure in the doors and all of that, and I have visited their home, so I have developed that kind of a relationship. And you know, you know I came here and I said I didn't want to be noticed until we are through, then I would come to you personally. Um, but then somebody spotted me and Pastor Rabbi extracted me um, from, the, from the congregation. But now I'm happy that I have been given the opportunity and I want to let you know that my prayers are with you. And I feel, you know, somewhat your pain. Because the truth is, you know, having sat down, down there in the back, two times tears came to my eyes. Because I thought about O'Neill, I thought about my two sons, and I said it could be one of them. So I, I, I'm leaving you in God's care. I'm leaving you in God's keeping. God understands, and be assured that he will continue to take care of you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Pastor Alphia Smith. 
um, for those kind words and words of condolences uh, to the family of the late O'Neill Thelwell Jr. Just reminding you that this is the Thanksgiving service for Brother O'Neill Thelwell Jr. Uh, we are going to go to a condolence and uh, we are going to be having a condolence from this church. Uh, that's the church of Brother O'Neill Thelwell Jr. And uh, that's also, this is also the church of his parents, brother and sister Telwell, and you have heard already that they are stalwarts and very active members um, of this church, and other fam family members are also members of this church as well. And so at this time, I'm going to invite the first elder of the Buttermode Seventh-day Adventist Church, Elder Eric Vassell, to come and to bring the church's official uh, words of condolence to the family of Brother Telwell. I'm tempted to say happy Sabbath, everyone. <laughs> it's good to see the the kind of support that the Telwells family is getting this afternoon. And um, we're happy that you chose to spend the time in support of the family. Now, what do you say to uh, a grieving mother or a grieving father who has been robbed by the cold and chilly hands of death. I know the pain, but God knows everything best. Karen, O'Neill, Moisha, and other members of the Telvers family, on behalf of the pastor who we have grown to love and who has become close to your family. On behalf of the elders, the leaders, all the officers and members of the Bottom Road Seventh-day Adventist Church, we just want to let you know that we love you. And we stand in full support of the family. May God give you the peace that is beyond all peace that anyone else can give. May he give you comfort. May he give you joy. May he give you the courage to go through this difficult period. May the God of hope fill you with joy and with peace. May he grant you the strength so, so that you will have the power to overcome. May his Holy Spirit be with you and the family always. May the God who has experienced for himself death be with you because he knows best. And he said in his words in Proverbs 3 and verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. I know God is with you and will continue to be with you to the very end because he said, he who have started a good work in you will see you through to the very end. So to the Telvers family, just remember God is still in control. He will take care of you, and we stand resolute 
in full support of your family. God bless you and love you always. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Elder Vassal. Uh, in introducing the next two items, and I shall tell you, because you may be wondering, um, as the only true rabbi would have said, um, in no haste at this time. We are taking our time as we seek to comfort uh, the family, the Tellwell families uh, this afternoon. We may not get the opportunity to do so um, at another time, all right? say something. Uh, in, in a two years period at this church, um, there were individuals, young people who all had children. Um, all had children in just about two year period in this church. And, um, you know, as I think of O'Neill, I actually think of many of the others who were born in that two years period. In fact, you'll notice that a lot of them actually had the name Junior at that time. Um, so you had O'Neill Tellwell uh, Junior, uh, you had Kevin Smith uh, Junior, you had James Barrett Junior, you had Kingsley Clark Junior. You actually had quite a number of them in just a year and a half period, all born um, in this church. And there are a few others I could talk about, Alden, all right? Um, within a two years, many were born. to um, carry around the place at the time. Um, but, but I say this to say that, that as I sat there and I listened, my mind not only goes to O'Neill, who has left us, but those who are still here. And I am hoping that they are taking, my mother would say, take sleep mark death. <laughs> and I hope that all of them, the take sleep mark death, don't be a fool. Learn from the experience of others. And I'm really hoping that they will do so. And so in introducing the next item, one of that set of individuals um, will, be, will be giving us a musical item at this time, Kingsley Clark Jr. And then after that, we're going to be having an, a remembrance by the sister of um, O'Neill, Tellwell. Sister Anderson said it right. My most precious memory of O'Neill was when he and his sister did a brilliant sermon presentation that Sabbath. I know many commended them and spoke to them as I did. And we just wish, we just wish. But I cherish that memory, and I will continue to do so. And so the item after Kingsley Clark's musical, it's a musical, will be that of a remembrance by Sister Kamoya Thelwell. And then an offertory, Elder Barrett will lead us into the offertory.
And God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. So when you don't understand, when you don't see his plan, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart.
Good afternoon, church. I am here just to say a few things that I remembered about O'Neill. If I was to say all that I remembered, it would take me like 21 years. But I'm just going to remember the last few minutes that we actually spent together. But first, I remember that 15th day of March when I went to see Karen in the hospital with a gift for her because it would have been her birthday. And uh, I remember when I went up there, I asked the nurse, you know, where, you know, Mrs. Stelwell would be. And they told me she was at the theater. And I was like, you know, only to hear a few hours after that, she would have had a son, or a son, O'Neill. And I said, my God, it would have been the both of them birthday, the 15th of March. And I said, my God, I was feeling proud to know that I have my son celebrating the birthday of his mother. And that would have been that moment. But I also remember it was like about a week or two before his passing. I, I remember he, wa he came down to my workshop because he was working and he left his computer and he came down to the workshop and we were talking and he said some things to me I could not understand. And every day after his passing, I, I tried to reflect on the things he was saying, trying to understand what he actually means by what he was saying. And one of the things that he said to me, he was talking about his ancestors. And he talked about my mother, he talked about my father, he talked about my brother would have passed. He also talked about Karen's father. And I'm saying, why are you telling me about these dead people? I'm not really interested in the dead. You know, tell me what you would really want to be when you get older or when you start work or whatever, whatever. And he, he was there talking a lot of stuff. And he said to me that um, he was going to be dressed in black. And I said, well, I don't know where Oakland is. And... I'm not going to be dressed in, in no black. I'm going to be going to a place called Evan and I'll be in all white. And, you know, he was there and he was talking some stuff and we had a conversation till, you know, he was there just laughing because I'm saying, like, I've never really heard him talk that much. Oh, I guess I'm somewhat like that anyway. Karen is the one who is always speaking. But honestly, honestly... Even though I went and I see him and I see him, I just still can't believe because I'm saying, I wonder if he's still in the States, you know? I'm wondering, and I'm wondering a lot of stuff. I just can't believe that he is really gone. And, you know, I would expect that he would be the one carrying my casket. I wouldn't be expecting my son to do, the, you know, but God knows and I always tell Karen, I'm, a, I'm not going to question God. Whatever God does is well done. And... I stand here to tell people, to tell the brethren that, like Job, even if he slayed me, I'm going to trust him. Amen. And whatever God does is well done. And as past, um, um, Elder would say, I'm just here to tell the youth who remain. Hold fast and be true to God because one day he will come. And I don't want to be in the second resurrection. I want to be in the first one. And the only way we are going to be in the first one unless we remain faithful.
one of <laughs> the memories all start. One of my greatest memories I have with my brother. He always tells me to do some things that allows me to explore. He's not afraid to explore. One of my most important memory was deep ill of Cornwall courts. I did not hesitate. I did not hesitate. I, I did. I did as he told me. As I sped down the big hill, OJ shouted out to me, press the brake. I pressed the front brake, skid and fell. It was very scary as there was a car in front of me. OJ told me the next time I should press the back brake. And he told me to get on as some dogs were chasing us. You should have seen us flying down a very steep hill with dogs chasing us. I miss my brother and the fun times we had. My memories stood out clearly, as was mentioned earlier, from March 15. I reflected. I can recall I went to the theater. I did not see OJ on that same day. I saw him the day after. I reflected on his passing. It is customary for us. I would go to the doctor every year on March 15 on my birthday. But for this year, I didn't. We went March 14. He was at home working March 14. I did not saw him on that day. I saw him the day before his passing. At birth, I did not see him on the same day. When he was passing, I did not see him on that day either. I did not ask the Lord why. I said, the Lord give and the Lord take it. It wasn't easy for me, but I want to let you know that we still serve an awesome God. It not, it's not easy for us, but I believe that God knows what's best. God knows what's best. I cannot turn back the hands of time. I cannot wake him. I cannot talk to him. He will not hear me. But God knows what's best. I remember him cooking. And I'm telling about cooking. He has a different taste when it comes on to cooking. People would coordinate what they're cooking, rice and peas and chicken and fish and vegetable. OJ is not like that. If you have any form of vegetables, anything at all, he would mix it with the baked bean, he would mix it with the chicken, and he would put a little egg into it, Alia, yes, and he would put macaroni into it, everything that he would mix up together. And I can tell you, when he's through, the dish tastes, okay. I don't know how he does things like those, but it does, um, he, he really does it, and it really works out well. I can recall OJ usually do a lot of walking since January. December wasn't, um, January wasn't feeling well. And I threw the key to him and I said, What boy, you're sitting down, 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 you're sitting down,
and then take the key and then drive for his sister. Shortly after, there was a spirit came to my mind and said that, you know, see a car crash. Shortly after, he called me. He was on the other line. I said, Mommy, we meet in a one accident. I said, all right, I soon come. I went on the spot. And when I went on the spot, the car was all crashed. And the persons that were there, they said to me, you know, so the boy said, what a six vehicle like, boy I really can't drive. A six vehicle miss and me and lick the seventh one. Anyhow, I dealt with all of that. And the persons there were saying, somebody must have been praying because I don't know how that vehicle don't go over the gully. And when, we, when I went home, I said to him, you know, what happened? And he said, Mommy, you know, say, me, I'll go back down, they go talk to the people about God. Yes, he said that to me. And he also said, you know, while walking and so forth, he said, Mommy, I wonder if I God where God is using me to reach other persons. But, you know, I was not comfortable with so much of that. I can recall one day we went out for dinner. It was on Moisha's birthday. And he said, I gave Moisha some, I gave him some money to pay for the meal. And he, I'd slip the money and push it into Moisha's pocket and say, maybe take care of that. And I said, okay. He said, mommy, order anything you want to eat. And don't forget to bring something for daddy. And we ordered and we have our meal. And he turned to me and he said, mommy, I'm really sorry for all your problem them when we give you. But you deserve it. <laughs> so after that, he said to me, he said to me, Mommy, I, I want to be, you know, I want to, 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 to get rich. I want to have a lot of money so I can buy you a car and I can do this and I can do that and all of these things. He's, he, he, he had clear and good intentions. When I was sick, I asked him for a cup of tea. I text him. I mostly text him. And he said, I want a cup of tea. He said, Mommy, the next six minutes. So I was wondering how long, the, why the tea go take six minutes. Anyway, he brought the tea, and the tea came. I had the tea. And I was there talking to him. And I said to him, you know, something came into my mind, said, um, it just says nine days. I don't, it wasn't days, it was just a number nine keep popping up in my head. And I did not understand this in nine until he died. It took him nine weeks to die. From that date until the time of his passing. But I want to say to everyone, continue to keep us in our prayers. Continue to keep us in our prayers. It's not easy. It's not easy. And remember to trust God because God is in control. Thank you so much, Sister Terrell and family, for those precious memories. May the Lord give you the strength and courage and, and grace to cope as a reflect on your son. At this time, we'll be having our offertory. We'll ask the deacons to stand in their respective places. The offertory will be in aid of our church committee services department. And so may God bless the ministry of the Committee Services Department. At this time, I ask you all to for the offering. Yes, our bow eyes are closed. Shall we pray? Loving Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for strength and courage. We thank you, dear Lord, for being so good to us in spite of our challenges, our loss, and our pain. We know that you are still blessing us. We know that you are still caring for us. So we say thank you, Lord. We thank you for the offering that as we lift this offering today, your name will be honored, glory, and, and praise. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' precious name. 
Amen. We thank you for your kind contributions, your offerings. Uh, just to let you know that uh, the community services department of this church, uh, the work that it does is that it seeks to assist persons in the community. And so the funding that we collect here does not go to any um, aspect of the church's budget, but it goes towards helping others. And sometimes it goes back to just helping you that the person that it might be helping may very well turn out to be you as well. And so we thank you for your contribution towards the cause. Uh, at this time, we have two other items. I'm not, I'm not certain if they are ready, but uh, we have one from uh, Sister Janice Bowers. I think that one may be on screen, so they will indicate to me if, if that is ready. If not, we will move on. And uh, the Orange Seventh-day Adventist Church, I need indication if uh, that person or persons are here. Okay, the Orange Church is here. Uh, can I get a signal for Janice Bowers? Will it be coming? Okay. So we'll have the item by Janice Bowers at this time, followed by the Orange Seventh-day Adventist Church. Greetings to you in the name of our soon coming King and to the bereaved families. So I want to say to you, take heart and don't lose hope. For the God on the mountain is, is still God in the valley. Brother, sister, tell well and daughter, stay strong in the Lord and he will help you to ride out the storm. So I hope this song will bless your heart. Yes. 
Afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Orange SDA Church, we do extend our most sincere condolences to the Tellwells family. I stood in the courtroom. The judge turned my way. It looks like you're guilty. Now what do you say? I spoke up, Your Honor. I have no defense. But that's when mercy walked in. I said I stood in the courtroom. The judge turned my way. It looks like you're guilty. Now what? Do you say I spoke of your honor? I have no defense, but that's when mercy walked in. Mercy. And pleaded my case, called to the stairs, was God saving grace. The blood was presented on Calvary's hill, forgiven. Mercy walked in. I stood there and wondered how could this be for someone so guilty has just been set free. were all broken. See, I felt born again. That moment when mercy walked in. Oh, mercy walked in and pleaded.
forgiven when mercy walked in. See the blood was presented on Calvary's hill. Forgiven when mercy walked in. Thank you, my brother. One of the things I can say at this Thanksgiving service is that all the songs that have been sung appear to have been carefully selected for the occasion because I find them so appropriate. Thank you very much, my brother. At this time, we are going to be hearing a little of the life um, of the deceased. And so we're going to be having the eulogy at this time. And the eulogy will be read to us I'm getting old, so <laughs> I have to write things down and read them again. I can't memorize them anymore. All right, so it will be read to us by Sean Thelwell and Pelisha Vernon. I know you had O'Neill um, on the program, but uh, O'Neill is a strong man. He used to be strong. You know, I know he's strong, but he wasn't sure he could make it. All right, and so we had to have others. So at this time, Sean Thelwell and Pelicia Vernon. for the late like a comet blazing across the evening sky gone too soon like a rainbow fading in the twilight in the twinkling of an eye gone too soon shining sparkling full of hope full of promise and life you were here one day and swiftly taken away one night Gone, gone too, too soon. soon. Today, as we eulogize and reflect on the life of O'Neill Junior Tellwell, affectionately called OJ, we are looking back on the good times we had with him, the love, the memories we shared with him, who was a very special and unique individual. I think we can all agree that life is not fair at all. It seems like only yesterday, O.J. arrived and filled our hearts with so much joy and happiness. And in the blink of an eye, he was taken away, Wait taken away too, too soon. soon. On March 15, in the year 2001, Karen and O'Neill welcomed their first child into the world, a handsome, bouncing baby boy. Upon the first glance of his handsome face, he was given the name O'Neill Jr. since he was the express image of his dad. He was affectionately called O.J. O.J.'s parents were strong believers in the value of education, both academically and spiritually. As a result of this, he obtained his early education at the Glendovan Basic School. After leaving basic school, he was enrolled in the St. James Preparatory School, then Success Preparatory, and Green Pond Primary Schools, where he obtained his primary education. He did not stop there. He was enrolled in the Harrison Memorial High School, where he received his secondary level education, and he still did not stop there. He enrolled in the Heart Training Institute, where he pursued studies in, in the electrical field. From birth, 
he was taken to church each Sabbath with his parents. As he grew, he developed a stronger love for the Lord, and this led him to surrender his life in baptism to Lord here at this church in which we are seated at about the age of 11 years. During his teen years, as he was growing, a handsome young individual at this church, most times you could find him around the music and technological areas. He loved music and instruments, especially the drums. He would say to his mother occasionally, why we can't have drums in this church? Because if we did have the drums, you know me would have to play it because me love the drums. Each year, as the church would have their youth month at this church each year, they would have a month designated as Youth in Action Month where the youths would take charge. OJ was active in this and he would function in the role of deacon in the Youth in Action Month. OJ was a very quiet and loving individual. He loved his family dearly, especially his only sibling, his baby sister, Moesha. OJ loved his sister so much. He was happy to play the role of a big brother and was very protective, if a little risky, of his little sister. Everywhere Moesha went, OJ was there. He took pleasure in teaching her many things, such as riding her bicycle, even though at times he was the one who was doing most of the riding. At times, as was mentioned earlier, he would take her to the highest hill in Cornwall Court and tell her to ride off the bicycle. I suppose this was training in bravery. Even though at times the hill seemed so tall and scary, like Mount Everest, little Moesha trusted her brother implicitly and explicitly. And so it was not surprising that this tiny little girl would have ridden off of the top of that very high, steep, and dangerous hill because if OJ said it, Moesha did it. One day, while their parents were at work, OJ took the bicycle for a ride in the community. And he had a, such a good time at riding that he did not realize that the time had gone by so quickly. While having fun, his mother was returning home from work. When she almost reached their lane, knowing the vehicle, he spotted it quickly. Faster than Usain Bolt and Asafa put together, OJ made his way, reached home before the car could come through the gate, went in bed, put away the bicycle, went in bed, cover up, and was fast asleep. And would you believe his mother didn't find this out until a few weeks ago? That was OJ, skilled at riding and skill. He enjoyed climbing trees and was an excellent climber, as his cousin pointed out earlier. He would climb just about any tree, no matter how fat or how tall it was. One day, OJ fell out of a tree and burst his head open. You would think that having fallen from the tree, thank you, you would think that having fallen from the tree, that would have made sure that he would never return to it. Unfortunately, as soon as his head was better, he was back to his tree climbing ways. You see, he was a young man, filled of zest, filled with ambition. Oftentimes, he told his mother that he was going to own his own business and get rich so that they can live a better life. Because of this, he was ambitious and had a zeal for working. Many young persons in their teenage years would think of just having fun when summer come around. But OJ, at grade nine, he got his first summer job. And he worked for a while afterwards, even though he was a young man, after leaving school, he sought employment. And he worked at the j, &J Pharmacy. Then afterwards, he worked at Teleperformance, up until the time of his untimely death. He even attended work the very day that his life was taken away. On March 14, 2022, 
just hours before his 21st birthday, tragedy struck in the community. As shortly after returning from work, he went for a walk in the community, um, in the neighboring community where his grandmother lived and where, of course, family is always available. And it was upon returning home that he met his untimely death. The life of this promising young man was taken away. Lord, we cannot always understand the things that come our way. And at times, we may ask why, but all things we place in your hands. His mother recalls, I will miss receiving your hugs. I will miss our talks, and I will even miss our arguments. But most of all, I'll miss your hands holding mine. They will forever be imprinted in my heart. His dad, I will miss your help doing things around the yard. Miss calling out OJ in my stern voice to get your attention. But most of all, I will miss our talks. His sister says, there is so much I will miss. I will miss our jokes. I will miss our secrets. I will miss your advice. But mostly, I will miss your presence. Today is one of the most difficult days in the Tellwell's family life. And as we gather with them to say farewell to their son, brother, nephew, and friend, let us remember to keep them in the hands of God in our prayers. We stand here today broken in heart. The loss of a child is something no parent can ever be prepared for. OJ was a young man filled with life, zeal, and great aspirations. He had so many dreams and so many plans for a future that he will not get the opportunity to see because he has been taken from us too soon. Karen says, from the day you were born, you were a gift from God. You picked me up when I was down. You made me happy when I was sad. And I will truly miss that bond that we had. And in my heart, it will never, ever be broken. O'Neill says, you were my baby boy, my son, my friend, my workmate, my gentle giant. T time will never heal the pain that they are feeling and that they are going through without him. Their lives are shattered in two and their lives will never again be the same or complete. No words we write could ever say how sad and empty we feel today. You came and stayed with us a short while and left even much sooner than we planned. We'll brave the bitter pain that we feel, even though it's difficult to understand. Why wasn't it right for you to stay? Why did you have to go away? A huge part of you were taken, and even though our hearts are torn and broken in two. We love you dearly, and in our hearts you will always be. What we are suffering seems so unfair, but one thing is for certain. Our love for you will always be there. Our son, brother, nephew, friend, you will always be. The most important part of our heart's memories. We will always cherish the moments we spent with you. A thousand words won't bring you back. We know because we have tried. Neither will a thousand tears. We know because we've cried. So go, dear son. Rest in peace now, dear son, brother and friend, for all our love and memories, all the love and memories we share with you, we will forever hold there. OJ will be sadly missed by his mother, his father, his sister, uncles, aunts, other relatives and friends, yes. and of course, an entire church family, an entire work family, and all those with whom he had a relationship. So we say, farewell, sleep on. And we look forward to that time when, when we, we shall meet, meet you again. again.
Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Sean Thelwell and Pelicia Vernon. We're going to be having an item at this time, and we're now actually coming down uh, closer to the end. Uh, so we'll be having an item at this time, and this will come to us from Terita Cummings. Terita Cummings. Afternoon, everyone. I've seen the light in flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt since breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. Then I heard the voice of my Savior bidding me still fight on. And he promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone, no, never alone. winds are blowing temptation sharp and keen but I have a peace in knowing my Savior he stands in between. He stands to shield me from danger when all my friends are gone. And he Never. 
one more time. The world's fierce winds are blowing. Temptation sharp and keen. But I have a peace in no Stands in between. He stands to shield me from danger when all my friends are gone. But he promised. pleasure this afternoon to introduce the man of God who will speak the word of God. He is ready to be delivered. He is charged. And I pray on his behalf your attention. He is no stranger to us who are members of the church. He is our brother, our friend, a confidant. He is a teacher, pastor, Rabbi Brown. But before Pastor Brown comes to the podium, we will have a song of meditation, and this will be done by our very own church choir. After which, the man of God, who has been prepared to speak for God, will do just that. Hear he him, Pastor Rabbi Brown.
we started in the morning and now we are in the afternoon. Though we know we are in the presence of God because the songs as Elder Clark said, were very telling, powerful, and inspiring. We know we are in the presence of God. And, uh, thank you so much, Elder Vassal. for your brief and kind words of introduction. I'm going to keep a careful eyes, eye on the congregation. And I'm going to appeal that you should not allow anything or anyone to distract you now from hearing a word and getting a message. And if you're tempted to leave, don't leave. Because from the opening sentence to the final prayer is of vital importance at a service like this. I want to thank the choir for singing the song, Home of the Soul. And the stanza says, Home of the Soul, blessed kingdom of light. Home of the Soul, beautiful home. There we shall rest, never to roam. Free from all care, and where fall it no night. You can ask, the choir members for the rest of the word and take them home tucked in your bosom. But I have a thought that I want to share from the word pen of inspiration. And it would be best if you focus directly on me and allow the Spirit of God to speak to your heart. If there is anything that must be said, it must be said that the church is indeed a family knitted by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because ever since the passing of young brother Telwell, the church has rallied uh, alongside and with the Telwell family. I want to commend the women who are uh, always praying, always present, always visible, always supporting. And if there is anything that must be said of the church, the church is a family of the living God. I am moved and I am in pain now. I'm grieving hard with the family too. And whilst my grief is not in the same proportion, as a father from whose lion the child came or from a mother from whose womb uh, he came and birth was given it might not be in the same proportion but i am feeling the pain because humanity grieved together at the passing of a child and you have my support and my prayer and I'm going to tell you up front, I'm not even going to preach. I'm going to share a thought with an eye on the text and an eye on the clock. But I've grown to love Sister Telwell, and she's one of my favorite members, if not my favorite member. And uh, she's called uh, Ella Clark, is very picky. 
and she is picked on in almost every setting. <laughs> and she's a child of God. Sister Brown. <laughs> I didn't want to call you Sister Brown in front of Brother Tellwell. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's good to be the shepherd and have loving members. The thought is, and for some reason it's difficult to share a thought today, but I must. It is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 20, three verses. You will observe that these three verses are but a conversation. Bible says, and David fled from Neoth in Ramah. I'm reading from the ancient text. And he came and said, before Jonathan, you can listen, he's asking Jonathan, Saul's son, Saul's the king. Jonathan, his son. And David is asking the boy, his friend, childhood friend, a question. He says, what have I done? And what is mine iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life? Verse 2. And he said unto him, God forbid, <laughs> thou shalt not die. Behold, my father will do nothing, either great or small, but that he will show it to me. Uh, I'm reading the text. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. It's a conversation. Verse 3. And David swear moreover and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes. And he said, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as the Lord liveth, is swearing now truly as the lord liveth and as my soul liveth there is but a step between me and death this is the word of the lord a step between me and death. Father, we ask that you will guide this message, though brief, and allow it to do something to all of us, because we ask this in Jesus' name. Promise now that this is going to be short and to the point. But you can't miss the scene. Because David is the anointed king. And Saul is the appointed king. Very soon, David will be on the throne. And Saul would be no more. Telling you the thing in, a, in, in brief summary. 
But don't look away from the preacher. Keep your eyes focused on me. I'm imploring. They sung just recently that Saul killed his thousand, but David killed 10,000. They sung. David is a shepherd boy. Is one of Jesse's son, and is uh, his primary vocation is tending sheep. But we watch him in bravery and guided by the Spirit of God. I'm not going to shout. I promise you. How he, how he killed the lion. And how in bravery and guided by the spirit, he killed Goliath, the Philistine. One of Israel's God's people, greatest nemesis and enemy. He is on the rise to kingship. It is a boy that is brave to the core. And is skill at war. <laughs> I'm talking a little bit about David. But, 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 but now you get to chapter 20. And David is living in constant fear for his life. Uh, David is constantly in danger. He spoke to his best friend. We heard the conversation. It is true that brave men sometimes fall off into depression. It is true that sometimes believing men shifted from believing and move into discouragement. It is true that David uh, is faced with the possibility of death and he is flinching uh, in the face of death. We watch him kill the lion. We watch him kill Goliath. But now he is recoiled. He is pulled back. And we heard his words. He says, I'm going to swear to you that there is only one step between me and death. Oh, one push and he's gone. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Uh, so you ask me, I will tell you that his steps are dogged by treacherous malice. Big word. He's going to bed, but he's sleeping uncomfortable. It's one thing to be struck down on the battlefield. It's another thing completely to be struck from behind. Oh. So here is a man of faith. Totally, I'm going to be brief. But now his faith is struggling. Permit me to ace Novo. And can I just tell somebody? That I started off with David and his conversation with Jonathan, and we heard his swearing words. But if I should say anything, it must be abundantly clear that, like David, all of us are standing at Death's River. Ah, oh, uh, you, you heard that, don't you, sir? Gentlemen, and you looking handsome and well dressed. I saw they kissed you on the cheek when they came through the door. <laughs> I, I watched the women, uh, and I took note that you were greeted. But you can't deny that we are all living in a culture of death. You ask me and I will tell you that we are killed by stray bullets. We are killed by out of control driver. We are killed by the sudden 
cancer tumor. We are killed. And we have so many ways to die. We die from anxiety and heart attack. We die from diseases because of our lifestyles. We die from accidents because of carelessness. And bullets because of viciousness. And if you ask me to preach, I will tell you that our streets have become combat zones. And our homes have become prison cells. And it is true that all of us are targets of violent elimination. We can be killed at any instance, any moment. And you can be killed by a stray bullet. Life as God intended it was to be reverenced and respected above all else. But in these days, life is cheap. In these days, a life can be snuffed out for little or nothing. I came to St. James and I learned that I can be killed for the fun of it. Just just for the fun of it and uh, and a, a boy in it with his glock nine oiled and loaded just walk from home with an intent to make a new doppy they said they said i'm not gonna preach now but in these days life is cheap and one can be killed for the thrill of it in these days, a life can be taken for a diamond ring, gold, or monies. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, don't you? But we come to the point that uh, after the doctors would have tried their latest drug and the best mind pooled their wisdom together and the philosophers would have spoken their best words, that we still come face to face with death. I'm hastening up. I'm going to sit down soon. But you get to the wise man Solomon and you heard him. You heard him. In Ecclesiastes 9.12 he says man does not know his time. And then he says like a bird caught in an evil net we are all destined to die. Oh boy, and I groan in my spirit because the message is not even finished yet. David knew that there is only one step between, between him and death. And so there is a truth, a fact, a truth. And that is no one knows when that step will be our last one in this world. That's why Solomon says in Proverbs 27 verse 1, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring. It is one step that all of us will take sooner or later. I'm going to have to sit down soon. But we heard the, 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 the brilliant apostle says, It is appointed unto man once to die. But after death, the judgment. We heard him spoke again in Romans 5, 12. He says, death has passed upon all men for that all have sinned. And so we are all struck down with a cancerous tumor called death. The rich man, the poor, the beggar, the thief. Oh... It is important uh, that we know uh, that there is only one step to death. And when this happens, it takes us out of this world, away from our loved ones. We leave behind mourners. It robs us of our, of our opportunities and possibilities. And that's why the eulogy was so pregnant. It takes us away from our friends. And it is appointed to old and young. And you can die even in the midst of life unprepared. Uh, and so then there's a question that the preacher must ask in the middle of his sermon. The question then, are you ready? I 
am I ready for that step? I said, there is a searching, piercing question that you must ask and you must answer. Are you ready for the step? The Apostle Paul said he was ready. We heard him in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. He says, for I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. We heard his next words. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. <laughs> I have kept the faith. And then we heard him. The question is, are you ready? We heard him. He says, henceforth then there is a crown. <laughs> of righteousness laid up for me in glory who the Lord the righteous church will give came not intended to preach but to talk we heard Simon Simeon pardon me in Luke 2 25 to 30 you watch him is holding the baby child is Jesus Christ God in the flesh we watch him. The Bible says in verse 25, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem. We watch, I'm going to jump over to verse 26. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Jesus. 27, and he came by the Spirit in the temple. And when the parents brought in the child to do him custom of laws, then he took up the child in his arm and he blessed the Lord. And we heard his word. He says, now let thy servant depart in peace to thy word. For mine eyes, for mine eyes, I've seen thy salvation. Can I just tell somebody that there is a moment in death when you are ready and ready and prepared like Paul and like Simeon. For my eyes have seen thy salvation. I'm going to have to sit down soon, but there are two differences. Uh, when you come to the river of death, you can either die with Christ or out of Christ. If you're dying with Christ, then like the psalmist, you can declare, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. You can declare with Paul, he says, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Or you can die like Judas who took the sop, collected the funds, and committed suicide. Or like Belshazzar who after a party night on the river and the bank doing weddy weddy and all the latest dance and having a reveling party with girls and orgies. I heard the girl in the store. She says she went iron sure. It was two weeks ago. I listened with my ears. And she says she went there and she saw orgies with her naked eyes. Open sex in the lobby area. And she says, when it was finished and done, the girls got up and said, what happens here, stay here. What better says a party. And then God wrote and better says his wall. Meany, meany, tickle, you fasten. And the reading rendition says, Thou art weighed in the balance <laughs> and found wanting. Two ways. Either for Christ or without Christ. What we must make sure of before we take that last step is that our sins are forgiven and covered in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Isn't that the message in capsule? That's the message in nutshell. That your blood, that you, your, your life, your sins are washed and covered 
in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I have a line here. It's my message in totality. All I said before was just running language. But my message in totality is this. To die in sin is the greatest calamity that can overtake the dying. And so then, I'm going to have to say this and sit down. We heard the words of Ezekiel. And this is Ezekiel asking, God speaking through him. We heard his words. He says, cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. And then he penned this last peace in the text you can't miss it even if you're blind dumb and deaf he says for why will he die our house of israel it's a question for the 21st century world why will you die our house of Israel. That's Ezekiel. And then he asked it again. God is asking him to ask it twice. In Ezekiel 31, 33, verse 11. Say unto them as I live it. This is God speaking. Say unto them as I live it. My soul as I live it. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But that the wicked may turn from his ways and live. Turn ye and live from your evil ways. For why will he? die oh house of Israel ah somebody then heard the question and you heard the voice of God I'm stopping by to say then sorrowing friends I borrow this open text I borrow this text because it reminds us of the uncertainty of life but it also reminds us that we have a need for the Savior and ask us then to prepare and be ready. Because like David speaking to Jonathan and swearing, there is only but a step between all of us and death. Let the church say, Amen, Amen. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Rabbi Brown, for that very timely but very important message. The Bible says, Let him that hath an ear hear what the Spirit saith. Thank you very much. We're about to leave the sanctuary, but we could not do so without having a special prayer uh, for the family. We are going to be, we have in our midst uh, Pastor Althea Smith, and we are going to ask him to do us the pleasure of petitioning the throne of grace on the family's behalf. So at this time, I'm going to ask uh, the family, uh, not certain if they'll be able to manage the altar at this time, so I'm going to ask them to remain stand, sitting, but I'm going to ask the congregation to stand. So I'm going to ask the congregation to stand while the relatives and family members remain seated at this time as we understand uh, what they're going through. So the family members remain seated. The rest of the congregation will stand as we ask our pastor to come at this time and to seek the throne of grace on the family's behalf and by extension on our behalf as well. Pastor Smith. Shall we bow our heads? Our Father, who art in heaven, our God, yes. hallowed be your great name. We are indeed thankful to know that you are our God and that you are not like any of the gods of the heathen. As a matter of fact, besides you, there is no other God. You are God 
and your God alone. We are also happy to know that you are such a friend upon whom we may call and to whom we may turn in our every situation. As a matter of fact, you have entreated us in your words that we ought to call upon you when we are faced with situations such as which we are faced today. You have assured us that you'll always be there for us. That you will never leave us, neither will you forsake us. You have given us the assurance that you will hear us every time that we call upon you. You have said, Lord, that you will hear even before we call. And whilst we are yet speaking, you will answer. And so God, on behalf of our brother and sister, tell well, the family, we have come to you today. We have come, oh God, because there is none other to whom we may turn. We have come because we believe and we know of your awesome might and power and that there isn't anything that is too hard for you to do. So, Lord, this afternoon, I commit O'Neill Thelwell Sr. to you. I commit Karen Thelwell to you. I commit their daughter to you, O oh God. I commit all the other family members, aunts and uncles, cousins, whatever the relations are, O oh God, I commit them now to you. You are touched with every feeling of our infirmities. So that is to remind us that whatever the ache or the pain that we are experiencing, that you are experiencing it with us. And so God, we know that even as their hearts are aching, that your heart is also aching. And so God, we pray that in a very special way, that you will reach out to them at this time. We ask, oh God, that you will embrace them in your arms of love. We pray that you just cover them under the redemptive blood of Christ Jesus, our Savior, our Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will bring comfort and consolation in such a way which only you and you alone can do. Father, we pray that in this situation that you will grant them faith like that of Job. Faith to hold on to you tenaciously. A faith that will say, even though he slay me, yet will I trust him. We know, God, that the old serpent, the devil, is trying to use this moment to weaken their faith and even to have them release their grip upon you. But oh God, we know that he meant this for evil. But out of evil you can bring good. May it be oh God that this situation will cause them to trust even more in you. Oh God, we ask that you'll help them that they'll always be mindful that you are an ever-present friend. You are that ever-present shoulder upon which they may lean. Help them to understand, oh God, that you'll always be there. You'll be there in the morning. You'll be there in the new tide. You'll be there in the evening. You'll be there at night. You'll be with them 24-7 and 365, 366 when it's a leap here. You're always there. Assure them of this your presence with them, oh God. We pray that you'll continue to lead. You'll continue to direct their lives. 
in the pathway of righteousness. But we recognize, oh God, that there are other hearts that are mourning. All the friends of O'Neill, they're mourning. All his associates, they're mourning. The church family is also mourning. But oh God, we know that we have come to the right place at the right time. We have come to your throne. We have come at your footstool. Yes. And so we ask, oh God, that you'll bring comfort to the hearts of all of us. Yes. Thank you for your words of assurance. Yes. Thank you for your words of comfort. Yes. To know that all of this that we are now experiencing today, one day they will pass. Yes. Help us. Help the family. O'Neill and Karen their daughter, help the other family members to be mindful that better days are coming. Help us as a church family that we'll be mindful that better days are coming. Help us all, oh God, that we'll be mindful and want to pray even for those individuals who are here today who have not yet accepted you as their personal Savior and Lord. There might even be those here today who once walked with you, but have turned aside. Oh God, may you use this moment to bring some souls to you. May you use this moment to help, oh God, to help those who might be getting weak and indifferent to understand and know that now is not the time to let go, but now is the time to take a firmer grip upon the man Christ Jesus. So we look forward to that blessed day that glorious day when Jesus shall come, when he shall break open the eastern skies, when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. May it be, oh God, we know you're a merciful God, you're a loving Savior. May it be that your son, Anil, may it be that all of your children who are sleeping in the grave will arise triumphantly and all of us will be caught up together in the air to meet you at your coming. Hasten that day and keep us faithful until this end. For we ask all these mercies in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. what a service this was and um, indeed we just want to thank you for exercising excellent spirit and we appreciate you staying here with us we're going to ask now that the pallbearers um, come to the casket those of us who are on the platform will march ahead of the casket the casket will follow while the praise team is going to um, sing for us. We will have transportation provided for those of you who don't have transportation. There's a coaster bus outside, and um, I'm asking you um, to see one of us, um, Sister Christy. It's okay, just the bus is outside. I think it's a thousand dollars. $1,000 for the transportation costs to the burial site and back. The repass also will be held at the conference. All right? So the conference, West Jamaica Conference, is right beside uh, the Conwell Regional Hospital. All right? So you can't miss it. We ask the pallbearers now to um, take up their positions as we make way for... And the family... We just asked the family behind the casket. So we have the pallbearers. We will go ahead, the family and the pallbearers, and then everybody else will be ushered out. Praise team, over to you. And the burial, sorry, is at Hillcrest Delapeno. All right? Hillview, sorry, Hillview. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day, still bring us I onward bound, Lord plants my feet on higher ground, Lord lift me up and I shall stand by faith on heaven. Yeah. 
Thank you. 